Hello, world! Woo, indeed! What is up, man? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. We are officially one week away from the release of the latest entry in the ongoing Purge saga. As the title suggests, the first Purge takes us back to, you guessed it, the first Purge, to find out exactly how it is we as a society just kind of let this happen in the first place. And I got to tell you, after watching this movie, I'm not 100% convinced that we aren't like two months out from a straight-up, legit, real-life Purge situation here, people. This movie does a lot of things right it gives us a perspective we're yet to see from the series answers a ton of questions and does almost too good a job at connecting the dots between fantasy and reality uh, a big part of the reason this movie works at the level it does is because of the cast so i'm stoked because in just a few short moments we've got stars of the first purge lex scott davis is here ellen noel is here people how do you feel about this right now make some noise these are incredible people and they're here now, we're gonna bring them out in just a second, but before we do, I believe we have the trailer. So, let's go ahead and run that clip. Announcing the commencement of the first purge. Tonight allows people a release for all the hatred and violence that they keep up inside them. This won't bring him back. It won't make you feel any better. Thank you. It is a night that is defining our country. Citizens, this will be a tradition we celebrate every year. Join the first purge. Isaiah, come say bye. Go do your thing, sis. Always. I'll see you tonight. People are now calling this controversial experiment of legalized crime the purge. Do not purge! Do not purge! You and Isaiah, just stay with me doing the purge. Oh, we're gonna be fine on our own. We are here with Dr. May Updale. She came up with this experiment. Is the purge a political device? It is a psychological one. If we want to save our country, we must release all our anger in one night. Tonight, we'll see the good and evil in everyone. This is your emergency broadcast system, announcing the commencement of the first purge. Our neighborhood is under siege from a government who doesn't give a shit about any of us. At the siren, all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 hours. There's a lot of good people out there who we're going to have to protect. All emergency services will be suspended. We got to be prepared for anything. Your government thanks you for your participation. Parties, you predicted a much higher level of participation. Human nature does not obey the laws of politics. What the hell is going on? ex-military. Something funky going down, D. You're sending soldiers into the island disguised as citizens. This country needs for this to work. No one's coming to help us. After tonight, nothing will ever be the same again. They forgot about one thing. They forgot about us. What have I done? I'm coming. Oh, man, you better make some noise. A lot more well in next Scott Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, everyone. Right here. Hello. Hey. Oh. That trailer, that movie. I, to I, I told you I got a chance to see a little early in the week. What a crazy ride this movie is. Man. Congratulations to both of you. Huge congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you so of much. Of course. Uh, thank you so much for being here, taking time to come hang out with us. We're going to jump in. We're going to talk about it in a second. But first, I love, because we've got a, a second or two here on Bill, just uh, checking in. How are you doing? How, how are you guys? How's press going? How oh, are you holding up? Nice of you to ask. I know. I love to know. That is the That's first sweet. time we've gotten asked that, like, yeah, all week. That is a crime. How, See, little how things are we like doing? this. I don't know. I you don't even, even know. That's it. it. Nobody's asking. Now I need to so analyze long. myself. <laughs> All right, let's take a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this, 
I love yeah. New York. I think yeah. we both love New York. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and on top of that, we're just extremely excited, it's, man. Yeah. This is this is a good time. It's a great time. Good Absolutely. time, yeah. both of us. Yeah. Yeah. No, you guys are a, a week away from release. You've put a lot of time, a lot of heart, a lot of soul into this project. Uh, I imagine, yeah, you're excited, right? You, you have, you've seen it in full. I know that, right? Yeah. You guys have seen it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so, what's it like leading up to? Here we are, seven days. The world is going to see it. Are you excited for the conversations that it's inevitably going to spark? Oh. Oh, yeah. Right? I like, cannot wait. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Right. You guys are ready for it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, you know, because it's it's interesting. I was watching this movie, and, and the Purge series as a whole has always had that, like, socio-political, like, layer, that commentary there right under the sci-fi horror and all that stuff. But this one in particular, and I alluded to this in my intro, d makes the strongest case so far for that holy crap, this could happen feeling where you're watching it, and you're like, not only can this happen, a lot of things like this feel like they might be happening right now. Was that something you got a sense of in the script? Was that there from day one? And, and if so, you know, was that something that drew you into it? Like, oh, this is really relevant. This, uh, is, this yeah. is not just a scary movie. This is a movie with a story that I want to tell. 100%. I mean, because I, I am really scared of scary movies. But for me, what, what drew me to do, to do this one was the fact that, like you said, it was so grounded in real life circumstances. And then to be completely honest, that's what I find the most frightening about this joint yeah. is how, you know, the, the, the type of issues it, it sheds light on. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you what do you think it is about this purge that, that people are, are responding to and saying that this is relevant? What do you think it is about the story that makes it feel that way? I think this one has the most social commentary out of all of them. I'm a fan of the series, so I've seen mm -hmm. I've seen them all. Seen them all. Um, and usually those familiar with the purges, it's like maybe it starts a couple hours before the eve you know, the evening, the countdown. So we dive straight in into into the violence. Yeah. Whereas this one, because it is the prequel, um, the characters as well as some of the audiences who made and have never seen the purge, it, it didn't exist before this for these people. So it's like we're all being introduced to it. So a lot of this film is still very realistic and natural for us. We're just doing our day to day things in this yeah. community. Obviously, you know, the night is coming. We've been hearing about it. It's all over the news. But we have a chance to actually get to know characters in this one as opposed to just diving straight into violence and, and mass. Yeah. yeah. All right, and you you don't know. We're just uh, in the same way that somebody who's never seen the purge prior, like these people have never experienced the circumstances. So that just makes it a lot more thrilling, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it definitely does take its time getting to that moment, which I really enjoyed about mm. this particular purge, is because, like you said, we we get to not only know the characters but understand the community, which is very much a part of this movie. I think more so than the other ones, we see how the purge in, in, uh, affects an entire community and how they respond to it. Uh, when, when did you guys film this thing? When, did, when were you on set? September, October. September, October last year. So that, okay, because I'm trying to think of like, uh, like the real world things that are happening. You're coming off, that's probably the heels of Charlottesville. That's uh, yeah. the, the Vegas thing was around then as well. So yeah. stuff's going on outside, right? Yes. In the real yeah. world while you guys are making this movie. What does that do to the conversations you're having between takes? What are you guys talking about on set? Because I think in the past, there's there's always been like, oh, this is a commentary on what's happening, but there was a layer of escape. This one, again, very real. Yeah. So how does that affect the vibe? How does that affect your performance, what you guys are doing out there? I think that um, naturally, just as a script, it wasn't as intentional mm -hmm. um, as it it really is just a byproduct of where we are in today's yeah. society that if we are staying true to the groundedness and the reality of the characters and where we are then unfortunately that is also the reality for for these type of places and and everywhere i mean we see it all in, we see it in the news it goes viral um and it's always been happening. I think that the time is now and the time is perfect because we are now given platforms to express ourselves and, and have real dialogue about these things. Because it's not new. Nothing is new about it other than that we all have phones and we can record it and it can go viral. Um, so it's no matter, like us shooting it in September, October, we could have shot this years ago. It still would have been relevant to whatever situation, um, you know, America is, is under right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, uh, one of the original things is, is that the idea of the purge was introduced as like a, a catharsis, like a release, like in the right. first film, that was kind of the idea. Is there getting to sort of recreate 
uh, the, these crazy moments? Is there a, a, almost a personal catharsis through the performance of getting to, to do these things and embody these characters? You know, as Nia, you're on top of the car with the megaphone leading the, the protests, and, and then as Dimitri, you get that last half of the movie where you just yeah, it was, it gets you intense. lay down the law. Yeah, like, I mean, there's, there's a few moments performance-wise. I feel like the biggest challenge for me was to, to find those moments for, for my character because so much of what he represents is he's very stoic. He has to be that. If you're a leader, you, you can't always show all your emotions. You kind of have to keep your cards close. So uh, to find those personal moments for to, to, to make the audience relate a little bit more was, was really important to me. And I, I, think we, I think we did a pretty good job weaving them in there when, when it was okay. What's that, what's that process look like for you guys when you're preparing for, for these kinds of roles and when you're preparing to tell this story? What are you doing leading up to before you get to set to get ready to be these people? It depends on the project. Like yeah. for this particular project, because of the nature of 12 hours of legalized crime, just, I mean, the idea, like just reading yeah. the script, I'm like, okay, this is crazy. Like I, I put myself in that position and in putting myself in that position, I tend to isolate myself a bit. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but like I, before I got to Buffalo, I got another phone. I told my moms, so I was like, yeah, I might not be hollering at you. Is there anything you need to tell me, tell me now. Cause I, I just needed to like hold the space for a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, that's how I chose to sort of serve, serve uh, my character in particular this, this time around. I love that you got another phone. I got another little, that's little, another, that's little, little, little burner trap, phone. Little just a little trap phone. phone. <laughs> little, yeah, little burner phone. I, got a I little like, <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. I got two. Little, hey. Did you too? Did you get a little burner phone? Is that? No, I did not get. Oh, two. okay. <laughs> I got one in preparation for this interview. I shut out yeah. from everybody in the building. I got a, I got a little burner phone. And I, <laughs> method interview. <laughs> exactly. yeah, no I really want to immerse myself. We write across the street from Tish, man. So it's okay. You that's deep right. into hey, the crowd. This is the place to do it. Yeah, baby. Uh, Lex, what was, what was your process like? So you didn't have a phone, but how did you get into that mindset? No. And uh, I've, I've got to be a leader as well. You both play strong leaders within this community. I and mean, what's it right. like for you getting ready for that? I mean, it, it's just a lot of character diagnostics. I'm really into psychology and um, just being able to break down the, the, the character, but more so everyone else's character, because I wanted to understand how Naya serviced Dimitri and how she serviced Isaiah. And, you know, it's, it's so many... Um, leaders in this film granted you know we are the the obvious leaders but there's so many leaders in this film that without one there is the there's no other so I wanted to kind of be well-rounded on everyone um to really submerse myself into the circumstance and obviously being familiar with all of the purges um so I, I definitely know um the you know the backbone to this story but again we have the opportunity to really get to know these people outside of this holiday existing and yeah I just I really wanted to just break down um, the goal understanding that the task of my character who is Naya is simply to just save as many people as she could get them into the church um, obviously the night unfolds as you all will see but yeah it was just uh, just kind of just character development well, I mean, you can see that work, that work pays off, like it's there for sure, because like by the time you get to the end of the movie, like, and this is not a slight at all against the other purges whatsoever, but by the end of this one, I was like really excited to see another story with these people that I've gotten to know. Like I want to know what happens to yeah. them next. You and know what I mean? What I love about that pays off in the end, like you were just yeah. briefly saying, because in the other ones, people die left and right. So we were unfortunately numb to it. We were so used to, you know, we've we've gotten desensitized. Whereas this one, if someone dies, it's like, whew, yeah. you feel the weight of it. You feel like you knew this person. You knew where they grew up. It's, you know what I mean? So it's definitely, we had a lot of uh, a different approach to this one, I'll say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was um, I was watching some of the, like, behind the scenes stuff. The, there was some footage just you guys working on it. You were up in, I think it was Buffalo, right? Mm -hmm. Where you guys went. And it's like... It's behind the scenes, so it's like shot on like somebody's phone or whatever. It's you know, it's it's different. You see the cameras and stuff. There's movie magic, but it's still creepy as hell. It's a deserted street. There's fog rolling through. Yeah. I, I, I'm wondering, were there moments that were like as unsettling for you in that moment on set as it is for us watching it? Because I was surprised with how much the atmosphere was like naturally there, naturally like creepy. not added later. Shout yeah. out to Buffalo. Shout out man. to. It's a very charming place. All the no, all, of all the people look, are great. Any place at three in the morning. <laughs> 
with nobody on the street Downtown, is going to be a little creepy, right? right. Like, for 100%. sure. It's not a slight on Buffalo. Hey. We got a lot of Buffalo fans out there that watch. We know this. I've seen the numbers. Yeah. I've seen the numbers. Um, Buffalo, but, we know you. Oh, good one. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, what yeah. was it like? Talk to me about being out there, being on set and doing this. Yeah, man. I mean, after a while, it starts... St- because it's the purge and because of the character I was taking on, we were taking on, like, I started to have, like, a physiological effect, whereas to where it, maybe a little bit darker than this, wherever, when it started to get dark, I started to get that nervous, no empty feeling in my stomach. Yeah. Whether I was shooting or not, I started to be like, okay, cool, like, I don't know what to expect tonight, what's going <laughs> to happen? Like, I started to actually feel that as a line, so, I don't know, it's, it, I think it helped it. I think it, yeah. it, it, dro- it drove... The motivation of the character. Right, because, so, yeah. you know, you got to stay did you, woke. Yeah. Did you have a moment that... Did oh, it, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah? Go on. The, I mean, <laughs> when we first got to Buffalo, I had never been. This is my first time going to Buffalo. I used to live here. So I'm used to, if it's 3 a.m., you go outside, you're going to see some people. You're going to get on train late. It's yeah, safe. A lot of New York, honestly, is, like, safer than yeah. most places because there's a common people walking around whatever time of day. Yeah. Yes. So I'm like, oh, I'm excited. I get to shoot in New York. I never shot in New York before. Uh-huh. Going to the city. Then I get there, and I check into our hotel. And then, uh-huh. I mean, it gets it gets dark. And I'm like, well, I'm hungry. Let's go walk around town. And we're downtown. The hotel was downtown. Yeah. So I'm like, it's downtown. I'm going to find a place. Went outside. You, It was like a tumbleweed blew, flew by. <laughs> it's train was, tracks, no trains. Yeah. yeah. Oh it was just, God. like, very eerie. So it would be you on the street, and I still walked around and probably not the smartest thing to do but um it was me and maybe one other person like approaching across the street that's the creepiest thing so my dad is like well how do you what do you think about buffalo because he was coming to visit and i'm like i mean I don't, it's definitely a great place to film a horror film that's that's for sure was, i gotta see it in the daylight it's i can't perfect. make an opinion yet i don't know it's mm. perfect it, it is it really is a perfect setting uh and it really is great hang on though when you said i'm gonna be in new york did you think were you like what part of the, what borough is Buffalo? What did you think? I don't even. You, <laughs> I never had to pay attention to yeah, 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 yeah. the geography of New York State yeah, I'm as much as like, let me just learn the subways when I lived here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's so a just, whole yeah, other world. Head, like, Outside this is of New what York I know City, New York is. it's like yeah. a whole other world. It really I've is. never had to go anywhere beyond New York City while I'm in, you know, in town. So. That's one of the amazing things about New York State is you go like an hour and a half, two hours north, it is a different planet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty incredible. There's a lot of a lot of amazing stuff out there. As soon as you see cows, that's how you know you're officially upstate. Mm. That's the, the, the marker. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you, I saw a tumbleweed. I'm just going to drop some upstate knowledge on you. All right, so uh, every, every great horror franchise has uh, its calling card. You know, Freddy's got the glove, Jason has the mask and the knife and whatnot, and, and the Purge has the creepy, creepy-ass masks. That is like what Purge has. It's, aside from the 12 hours of free killing bit, there, we know it because of the mask. This movie does not disappoint. There are some creepy masks in this movie. Did you guys get to, did you get to take a mask? Did you take a mask home? I you didn't want have, like, these a, You don't want a mask? No, nah, I'm not trying to have no parts of these. You know what masks day. we're talking about. Yeah. We don't want to give too much away. And not at all. We don't want these yeah, I'm masks. Not to give anything away. Yeah. When talk about it. I hope you don't fun. sell these masks in Halloween stores. No Comic Con, none of that. Yeah. No, these aren't the type of masks we want. Have you guys had to do any of that yet? Or you we had to talk to people that we liked. Yeah. At Crafty, who ended up wearing those masks. Right, so that's always you got to negotiate like how are you gonna have a conversation with somebody who you are have befriended wearing that mask in yeah. particular, that mask in question. All of you are gonna see it, in July and they'd be, like, and be like, "Oh, that's oh, what they that's was talking what about." That's what they're talking. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yes. Makes those sense actually, now. There's a few of them. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're, we're running out of time here. We're gonna turn it over our audience in a second, get some questions from them. But uh, and I've alluded to, it, and again, I don't want to give away uh, anything about that last half. But there is some amazing choreography and work that goes into that last bit of the film. And uh, I've always loved the action elements that the Purge has had, and this is probably one of the most uh, exciting, invigorating experiences I've had at a Purge film. I, I just, what was the preparation like for those moments? How the choreography, the training, all of that? How long did that take, leading and getting ready? for that kind of uh, sequence. Yeah, our stunt people were amazing. Yeah. Like, I think they made, they, made, they made me look really good. Like, I do this all the time. Uh, big ups to them. But honestly, it was, it was really on the fly. Like, we would, I think, mean, like, maybe like three days prior, we would, I would get a video of the choreography, yeah. if you will, and uh, give me, like, a day or two to sort of, like, rest on it. And then the day of, we sort of tried to put it together. But, like, 
Hank and Mike, man, I said, like, they are, they do this. Like, they are about the stunt choreography life, and they were able to sort of, like, plug and go when it came to me. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, kudos, man. You nailed it. You, you yeah, guys both you did. Honestly, yeah. this, I, I said it once, I say it a million times, man. I, re, I really enjoyed this film. In, in the, I saw it in the perfect setting. You guys, you got to go July 4th, see it in a packed house. Everybody goes nuts. It's, it's a great group experience. As much as there is some really serious social commentary, there are some really serious messages, but it, it, at the end of the day, this movie itself is entertaining as well. So yeah. you'll have those conversations as you walk out, but while you're sitting there, you're going to have a great time yeah, watching it. Have a good time. Got, yeah, yeah, exactly. Free to yell at the screen. Yeah. Exactly. That's Don't great. go in there, girl. Oh, there were All some great comments. I love it. Do that. Do that. <laughs> uh, so, so we're going to turn it over to the audience. You guys, we got some microphones out there. I want to get some questions from you guys. The first one looks like it's coming from right over here. What's up, hey. guys? Um, so I was nice. wondering, uh, if we did have a purge, like, how would you guys prepare? I love this question. Um, I would lock myself in a grocery store so that I can eat throughout the evening and hide out from all the danger. That's it. But a lot of, gla- lot of <laughs> large glass windows at a grocery store. No, the basement of the grocery store. You're going to go to the store. basement of the grocery yeah, store? Yeah, you got to think deeper. Yeah, the historically very hygienic, <laughs> super dark basement. But the grocery friendly- store has everything you could possibly need to weather the storm. Well, right? I mean, like, from Your a food toiletries, standpoint. Toiletries, food. Practical. There's there's clothing wish- sections in some grocery stores depending on what part of town you're in. Dollar yeah, Tree. I guess if it's like a super stop and shop, they're gonna have <laughs> they're gonna have everything. Mm-hmm. Get one of them big foam coolers from the top of the shelf. You bring everything downstairs. All exactly. right, I'm saying there's a strategy. <laughs> There's, a strategy. There's candy aisles. It's perfect. <laughs> where, where are you gonna hold? I'm up? assuming we've known that the purge. We know what the purge entails, right? So I mean, I would I would have prepared a list of people. Oh, you're going out. I'm going out. Yeah. I mean, I'm going out innocently. See that choreography? I'm not going to the girl. I mean, but I'm going out to be in a, have a very innocent approach. I hate bad customer service. So I feel like I would have had a tally of people who have had bad customer service throughout the 364 days of the remainder of the year. And I'm egging houses. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm putting toilet in, 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 in trees. And people who don't... Um, Signal your, your who don't who don't use their like mischief night on Halloween. It's gonna be I'm a very in houses. Yep, I'm throwing I'm leaving eggs. People who don't I'm, signal. Yeah, it's gonna be a very instructional, educational, optimistic purge for my. We are non-violent purgers. Non-violent, but it's, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna get my catharsis some way, some or not. Yeah. So you're gonna go to her grocery store, get all the eggs and all the TP. Yeah, we're gonna work together. Go oh, there we go. I like you, you guys get to see each other on your evening. Where would yeah? Where yeah, would you wait, be wait, on what you try? What you what you get into, bro? I don't know. I suppose, I, you know what? That's a great question. <laughs> I, you said grocery store. I immediately thought Costco. There's okay. a lot of space. I want to be able to move good. about. I don't want to be penned in. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I don't yeah. want to be in a corner. No 7-Eleven. I'm not We're going out. Big. Yeah. I'm a little guy. I'm a diminutive, diminutive man. I'm not an imposing presence. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't go out with a list. Do you know what I mean? So I got to... But you... See, I'm not that big neither. I'm, I'm, oh, you, you're going to go out a list now, and an armored vehicle. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. You go out prepared. Yeah. I'm just saying... People never called me any any kind of Rambo. All right, you're, uh, you're getting you're getting accolades like right that. now. I like that. So uh, so I, I I'm it. just I'm not an imposing presence. I, I I've never been able to be that. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and duck and cover. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where. In fact, maybe I am sure, but I'm not telling anybody. This is live. Ooh. Right. I don't want you guys that. to That's know great where I'm hiding. This is true. Yeah, we almost set you up. So when it comes to fight or flight, you. Oh, I fly. That's all good, bro. It's all good. It's all good. Catch that breeze and I'm gone. I'm just... I'm, can I get, a, can I get a one more question? I'm out. That time? Do we have... I got one more. Who do we got? Right here. Bring it on. Hi. Okay, so mine's a bit of a follow-up. So now you know where you'd hide, but what would your disguise be in real life if there was a purge? Ooh. Whatever color the wall is, I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm just... The wall decor. That's really good. Disguise. I don't know. I uh, was. I'd probably just be in all black. I don't know. It depends on where I'm at. If I'm a place, yeah, it's gonna be the walk. Camouflage. I don't know. Camouflage. Yeah, I don't know. How about you? What would you disguise as? I don't know. You thought about this? No, I haven't thought about it. (laughs) But I, you know, it's a really hard question. It depends on where you are. Yeah. Just enough time. Let's put some thought into this. Let's think. Yeah. All right. Disguises. 
Do we want to blend in? Do we want to stand out? Are we making a statement? What's the mission? We definitely want to st- not stand out. Yeah, you don't want to stand out. No, you're uh-huh. TPing houses, so you're going to be on the down Yeah, I'm going to be... Oh, in that, Do you even yeah. need a disguise? You're in the supermarket. Be like, yeah, I'm just hiding. You're just hiding. Okay, no disguise. Maybe you, something funny. Something funny? All right. Yeah. Something... <laughs> He's got sweaty. Rubber ducky. Gonna... Dress up like Waldo. Be like, where's? <laughs> yeah. That's it. Red and where and white am I? Striped hat where... with a sign on the Let's back. Let's play a game. <laughs> and die immediately. <laughs> the... <laughs> We're quite silly outside of this yeah. film, yeah. as you can see. <laughs> no, but I love it. I really do. You guys, and that just kind of speaks to how amazing you are as actors. Because frankly, I, Thank I, you. I didn't know what I was going to get after a movie like this, and I'm very, uh, very happy and very uh, honored to meet you guys. The work you did is phenomenal, and, and we got to wrap it up, right, Liz? We got to wrap it up. Is that the thing? Okay, good. I was in my wrap-up spiel here. <laughs> I, um, uh, I really dug it, guys. July Fourth. I'm telling you, even if you've never seen The Purge, go you, check this out, man. Get a bunch of people together. Go have some fun. Watch this movie. Uh, have some conversations afterwards, and, and, and figure out what your disguises are going to be. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I'll mm-hmm. say July 4th one more time, The Purge. Uh, make some noise for Lex and Elon here. Come on, guys. Everybody, let's do Elon, Lex, Scott. Thank you, guys.